at midnight on December 2nd, the MLB officially entered its first work stoppage in nearly 30 years, when the MLB owners decided to lock out the MLB Players Association after the two sides could not come to a collective bargaining agreement. With this, the MLB is in serious risk of missing games come this spring season. So, Logan, what does this mean for the future of the MLB? Well, obviously this is kind of a last resort, both by the owners and the players. The owners really are the ones that made the decision to lock out the players and keep them away. Obviously, this is a bad look for the MLB, especially by their fans. You know, this means a possibility of lost games. This means a possibility of lost revenues. This means a possibility of maybe losing games and players in total. And so it's a really big issue, especially considering the last time that there was a work stoppage, the player strike of 1994 and 1995, that the team kind of the game kind of lost its aura its feeling of america's pastime and you really don't want to see that happen again according to commissioner rob manfred the mlb was forced to make this decision to best ensure the safety of the 2022 season and it has been proven through multiple leagues that lockouts do push negotiations but the clock is ticking for the mlb and players to come to some sort of an agreement so when should fans expect baseball to come back the idea of the canceled games and worrying about the canceled games is kind of making it seem that the spring training section of the season, which usually takes place about mid-February, that's kind of considered the soft deadline as of right now. And the biggest deal with that is obviously those games don't go towards payment for the players. Those games don't go towards a lot of league revenue since a lot of the teams aren't making a lot of money for those games. And so that's kind of considered yeah, they're lost games, and yeah, it's going to impact teams, but it's not considered a huge loss. The biggest deal would be March 31st, that opening day weekend. If they start losing games then, it would be really serious. Spring training is indeed a critical time frame to keep an eye on for sure, with many teams reporting in early to mid-February. While there is no set time frame for spring training, February will give the two sides roughly two months to get to some sort of an agreement. Right now, there's hardly anything either side can do besides negotiate. Players aren't allowed in the facilities or even allowed to talk to coaches or managers. For the MLB side of things, free agency stops, the winter meetings are tentatively canceled, barring a quick resolution, and team personnel can't even speak to the media about players on their 40-man roster. It is quite literally a stop to everything fans know about baseball, and we're all playing the waiting game just to see what happens next. Yeah, and the biggest thing about the waiting game is that we don't want both these sides waiting too long, and the impact is a late start to the season, missing games, canceling games, and just not really going in after opening day and being a successful start to the season. In the 1994-95 player strike, it ended in August, the collective bargaining agreement, and that kind of affected the rest of the season in August and beyond. They canceled games, I believe it was over 700 in total. They canceled the World Series, which is obviously MLB's big revenue maker. And so for that to be canceled, we don't want that to happen at all. And opening day is a big revenue maker for the MLB, so they really want to push it. Thankfully, this collective bargaining agreement ended in the off season. It ended in December. So like you said, they have that two month window for spring training and roughly three, four months to be able to figure something out before opening day. Now we definitely do not want to see that, especially not the loss of an entire season. The two sides are looking to find a mutual solution for their collective bargaining agreement, but there are a lot of things being considered right now, which is why we're at the state that we're in. The biggest issue, of course, is money, as it always is. The players want a little more rights for their services, things like major league service time, and teams tanking ultimately impacting the profitable longevity of each player's individual careers. While the MLB players have their sticking points, so do the MLB owners. The biggest thing is that they want an expanded playoff, something that we saw during the COVID-19 impacted season. The expanded playoff, obviously, that means more money, more revenue from TV deals, more money for the owners with fans coming into the stands. But it's a problem with MLB players because that also means more wear and tear on your body. 
you have more injury risk, you obviously, your revenue for each game, your paycheck kind of goes down a little bit. And so with those issues, it's kind of a butting heads right now. And that's why we're at the point where we're at, where they just cannot seem to agree. Yeah, and sadly, it does seem like there is still a long way to go. But hopefully for the fans' sake, the two sides can come together to guarantee the return of the 2022 season. That's it for us here at BBM Sports. For Logan Hansen, I'm Zakira Majid. Thanks for watching.